Hello and welcome to another week of Newman Congregational Church's Holy Troublemakers TV. I'm Christy Winvey, the Minister for Faith Formation, and I am so excited to start 2022 off with you. We are made of stories and stardust. We tell the stories of holy troublemakers and unconventional saints, people of faith who have worked for love, justice, compassion, to inspire us, make us bold, and connect us to each other and the love that makes us one. Today we're going to read the biography of our next holy troublemaker, Father Gustavo Gutierrez. I'm very excited to start the new year off with this one. So let's go, let's start reading. As always, we read from Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints by Deneen Akers. In the picture it says, we have been made by love and for love. Gustavo Gutierrez. Dawn breaks over Lima, a city on the coast of Peru next to the Andes Mountains, one Sunday morning. A priest walks down the streets of the Rimac district towards his church. It's a modest church with peeling orange paint. There are no, no fancy stained glass windows or soaring works of art there. This church reflects the hardships that many people in his neighborhood face. Most of the people who are part of this particular church live in poverty, many in extreme poverty. They don't have the money for basic necessities like enough food for themselves or for their children. Many of them also live in houses built out of scrap materials on a steep hillside. They have no running water, no insulation to keep them warm, and not even a foundation to keep the house dry and safe in major rainfalls or mudslides. Their children get sick from diseases that children in other areas of the world don't get sick from very often anymore. As the priest walks to his church, he's deep in thought. He has recently returned to Peru from a well-known European university where he studied theology, another word for discussions about God. He's considered one of the best new minds in his generation of priests in the Catholic Church, yet he is troubled by how to do his job well. How do I tell people that God loves them when every single day they don't have enough to eat and their children suffer? he asked himself. It seems so unfair to tell people that God loves them when they have to live in such difficult conditions. This feels like the opposite of love. This priest's name is Gustavo Gutierrez. He was born in Lima, Peru in 1928, where he is now a priest. He was born into a poor family, although his family was not as desperately poor as many of the people he now serves as a pastor. There is an unfair reality about extreme poverty in Peru and much of South America that Gustavo is bothered by. He can't help but notice how many indigenous people are among the desperately poor. Indigenous means someone is native to a region, that their families and ancestors who came before them lived on and loved the land. So indigenous people are descended from the original inhabitants of the land they live on. In the U.S., Indigenous people are usually called Native Americans. In Canada, they are called the First Nations people. In Peru, the people who are well off today are almost all descendants of the Spanish people who came to take over Peru's natural resources starting in the 1500s. During that time period, sailors from many European countries were visiting parts of the world that they hadn't realized existed before and claiming, them, and claiming those areas for themselves and for their leaders. The European explorers and the kings and queens who funded their sailing expeditions did not think of indigenous people as fully human or deserving of the same rights and respect as European Christians. American history books often call this time period something like the age of discovery. But you can't actually discover a land that people have already been living on for thousands of years. A more accurate term would be the age of colonization. Colonization involves one group of people taking over the land and resource of another group of people through violence. Many regions in the world still, extre still experience extreme hardships today are regions once colonized by European countries. The original people who lived on those lands for hundreds or thousands of years lost their tradi traditional lands, 
customs and ways of life when the colonizers came. Often the newcomers banned them from speaking their own languages and also forced them to work for little or no payment. And because the European colonizers were Christian, they usually also forced the indigenous people to convert to Christianity as a replacement for their own religions. The Peru that Gustavo grew up in and still illustrates the harsh reality of colonization. There are distinct class systems that were and still are tied to the color of one's skin. Darker skinned indigenous people are called indigena. Lighter skinned descendants of the Spanish colonizers are called istes. And there are also many people like Gustavo himself who are called mestizos, which is a Spanish word for mixed. Gustavo's heritage is mixed. He comes from both Spanish and Quichon ancestors. The Quicha people are indigenous people, mostly from the region now called Peru. Gustavo does not think it is fair or just that almost all of the desperately poor people in his community are indigenous people. He does not think it's fair that the rich neighborhoods filled with mostly descendants of Spanish people build tall walls with barbed wire on top because they don't want poor people coming into their neighborhoods. Gustavo doesn't think that it's fair. Many thousands of people live without clean running water in their homes while the rich, just a few blocks over, fill their swimming pools with it. It's like this all over Peru and the rest of South America. <laughs> this is even true in the U.S., where indigenous people experience much higher levels of poverty and have been forced to live away from their ancestral lands. I live on a continent, thought Gustavo, where 60% of the people live in poverty, and more than 80% of those people live in extreme poverty. This is an injustice. This can't be the will of a loving or a just God. Gustavo pondered this situation. Very little of the theology he learned at European universities seemed to be written from the perspective of the extremely poor people that Gustavo pastored. The traditional theology seemed to be written from the perspective of the colonizers, not the colonized, the oppressor, not the oppressed. So Gustavo started reading books. He read the Bible many times over. He spent dozens of hours in prayer. Gustavo knew how to spend a lot of time reading and thinking because when he was 12, he got a serious bone infection. So his body needed lots of extra rest. For six whole years, he couldn't even leave the house to go to school. So he had many hours in bed with his thoughts. Years later, as a young priest, Gustavo thought about what poverty really is. What causes poverty? Who sets up society's rules? Who decides to have national holidays celebrating the colonizers who hurt so many indigenous people? Gustavo started to question much of what he'd been taught. He saw that over and over again, he saw in both the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, God cares deeply for the poor and vulnerable. God frequently tells the people of God to care for the widow, the orphaned, and the least of these. And Jesus came into history as one of the poorest, most marginalized people possible. In Jesus, Gustavo saw that God became poor. To Gustavo, that realization shifted everything. And so he began to de develop a new idea. God especially has a heart for the poor and oppressed. God loves everyone. And God especially loves the poor, Gustavo says. This does not mean that anyone else is less loved. But imagine a family with one member who is sick. The whole family rallies around the sick person. That's the same idea as God's special love for the poor. Gustavo's definition of poor goes beyond those who do not have enough money. He does mean that type of poverty, but he's also talking about those who are socially poor which means that they are pushed to the edges of society and not respected or seen less fully as human. This includes LGBTQ people, disabled people, indigenous people, and people of color. Gustavo specifically talks about how indigenous peoples in both Latin America and North America were deemed insignificant by the colonial powers that took over their lands. They were killed, enslaved, or forced to relocate to the very edges of society. Many people, even today, forget that indigenous people do still exist. Once he had identified these types of poverty, Gustavo realized 
that societies are usually built by the powerful and rich who structure the rules to favor themselves. They need some people to stay poor so that they will be desperate for jobs and accept low wages. That's often how the businesses that the rich own can keep making money. Humans create the rules and conditions that keep most of the people in the world poor. This is a very difficult truth to accept, but it also can give us hope. If humans cause poverty, then humans can fix it. Gustavo saw that Jesus came to overturn these unfair structures. He started to see how important it was that Jesus chose to be born to a very poor woman who was part of an oppressed group of people. At every turn, Jesus spent his time with those on the very edges of society. He touched sick people, ate many meals with people other people wouldn't be seen with. He spent time discussing ideas with women, gave children his attention, and generally spent his time with those in his culture did not deem worthy of full respect. Jesus preached and practiced the values of a kingdom where everything was upside down. The last would be first. The first would be last, from Matthew 20, 16. The more Gustavo thought about this, the more convinced he became that God especially cares for the poor. So, he decided, any serious follower of God must care about the poor too. Lifting people out of poverty isn't just a nice thing to do, Gustavo said. It is the just thing to do. It is the right thing to do. It is what God asks us to do. Gustavo's ideas began to spread. Other people in Peru and Latin America began to listen to him and add their ideas. Collectively, this movement became known as liberation theology. Gustavo wanted to make sure his ideas weren't just talked about. He wanted these ideas to have practical impact on the lives of poor people. He started the Bartolome de las Casas Institute to serve the poor and work for just laws. He named it for Bartolome de las Casas, a priest during the time of Christopher Columbus who originally enslaved indigenous people and later African people. However, he had a change of heart and urged his fellow Europeans to stop enslaving others. To Gustavo, Bartolome is an example that once we know better, we can do better. Gustavo wanted his ideas about God's special heart for poor people to become something practical that every person could understand. He taught that people who aren't poor need to live alongside those who are poor. This does not mean that everyone should be poor, but it does mean sharing resources and getting to know poor people as friends so that all we do is based on real relationships. Everyone can also learn the history of our own cultures and how they've been created. Every time there's a new law or proposal in government, we can ask ourselves how it will affect the poor. We must put the perspective and well-being of those who are poor at the center of our thoughts and actions. Gustavo is now over 90 years old. His ideas about God's special heart for the poor have influenced people all over the world. It is hard to live a life imitating Jesus' upside-down values about the first being last and the poor having a special place in God's heart. Gustavo says, it's a job that will, will require our entire lives. Every time we pause to see a person who does not have enough to eat or a place to sleep, we imitate Jesus. Every time we help pass a law that puts poor people's needs in the center of our community's priorities, we imitate Jesus. Every time we stop to listen to someone whom our culture normally does not notice or value, we imitate Jesus. Every time we share something we have with someone who does not have enough, we imitate Jesus. How can you imitate Jesus? What did you think about learning about Father Gustavo today? I like the reminder that God especially cares for the poor and the oppressed. One expression of our faith is to look around us and see people and use our ears and hear them. I'm wondering if we can look and we can befriend and ally our neighbors or be an advocate and a voice for those around us. And maybe we can try to change something that is unfair or unjust. I wonder how would this world change if the last were first? Or if those who lived on the edges of your town or, or maybe in the edges of your neighborhood 
who we normally don't speak very kindly about or we don't have very kind thoughts about would be put in the center of your town? What, what if kids from different parts of town would come to your school or maybe even kids from a different city? Would your school look different? Hmm. What do you think we need for some change to happen? Let's really use 2022 to imitate Jesus. Let's use our ears to hear and our eyes to see the things that Jesus would want us to hear and see. And let's imitate him. Let's be a little bit more like Jesus this year. Most of all, I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being born. Thank you for being born to a poor family in a troubled place who showed us an upside down kingdom where the last shall be first. Thank you for our holy troublemaker, Gustavo. Thank you for his example and encouragement to see the poor and oppressed around us. When we see a friend hurting, will you help us imitate Jesus? When we see injustice around us, will you enlighten a path forward to help us be a change maker? May all of those around us know that they are known, loved, and cared for. Amen.